Okay, now we're recording. Okay, so for the first card that we're going to do, um, I want to show it to you in real life. And I want to show you the card that I kind of messed with first. Um, you can really do any type of uh, item that you have a die cut with to do this card or a punch. Uh, you can use designer paper on the panel um, and so forth. But this is the first card. I love this goat. <laughs> And he's in our new catalog. And I wanted to make a card for one of the young men in our in our um, house church who just turned 30. So here's the card. And then happy birthday, you old goat. <laughs> so again, instead of stamping here, you can use uh, paper if you have paper to use up. And in that case, you would put a little strip across the top and across the bottom just to kind of carry the theme in. But I wanted to make it simple for our first time together, so I hand cut, you're welcome, all of these little doggies. <laughs> so the card that we're going to be making here, um, I used the Playful Pets Designer Series paper, um, and actually the die cut this little guy out, and it cuts the little snarky curled up cat out. Um, but no, Beth, I didn't do the cat. So um, the puppy paws come in the, the thing too. So I just went ahead and then used a rectangular die. So it would cut that out. And then when we open it up, although there are one, two, three, four, five different puppies or doggies, um, I used the last doggy on this card. Um, so you get to choose what puppies or what dogs you're going to use on your on your card, but just keep one. So he's like, you know, I wanted him to look like he was in the crossroads and not sure which way to go with all the different paths. So I use this guy because I just liked his profile. But you choose whichever one you want. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. Um, one thing, oh, um, yes. Let me pull out. You should have your card kits because you are a Stamper Club member. Um, so if you pull everything out of your, <laughs> I'm making a lot of noise. If you pull everything out, you're going to need your um, dark ink or your Versamark, whatever you're using, and your background stamp. I highly recommend liquid glue, and of course your bone folder. All right, so, I am going to show you my work surface. Let me turn it around and we'll get started. Let's see. All right. So for the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take this and notice that it's only scored down one side. And the beauty of this, as I mentioned in my tutorial, the beauty of this is if you were to score your card on one side and then flip it around and then do the other and then try to make them meet, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes they don't really um, meet up. <laughs> so by doing this, I score one side and then you're just going to butt the other side up against it, hold it down with your finger and then score or press it with your bone folder. And that way you're always gonna have um, a nice, uh, a really nice edge on that. I'm gonna just do that a little bit more, okay? <laughs> and so I wanna have it a really nice, so I am like super pressing mine. You might go, you're gonna put a hole in that, not really. Um, so now that I have it like that, I am not going to stamp one side and then stamp the other. And I'm not worried about if I stamp across when they're both closed. I am not worried about anything getting in here because that's going to be covered up anyway after a bit. But my, my edges should be meeting together, so that shouldn't be a problem. So I am using the Early Espresso cardstock as are you that I supplied and I'm going to ink my background stamp whatever stamp that you have been choosing to use um, you're just gonna 
simply, you know, just stamp however you want to stamp it. And there's really no right or wrong way. We're just really looking for a little bit of texture. I might even go in that corner a little bit because because I can. I'm not for my for me, I'm using the basket weave from the Comfort and Hope stamp set. I love that stamp set. And um, I am not really worried um, about, you know, if I had a slight overlap. And on yours, if you're doing whatever background stamp, um, don't, don't worry if you have a slight overlap here or there. It's just all about texture. Okay. So I'm watching you guys as you are stamping. So once I have my outside done, then my next thing is to add the inside one. So I'm going to take my, oh, I don't have my sizes in front of me because I have my paper to the side, but Anyway, I'm going to take my inside piece that I purposefully made so I would have this nice little border. I just wanted to have to carry that theme in. So, yes, this is a recycled piece of paper. But that's why we have two sides of cardstock, right? So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on mine. Um, you could use whatever glue for this. I recommend when you do your... Uh, your little mechanisms that we're going to do that you use liquid glue because it is a little more forgiving and it gives you that wiggle room. Mm -hmm. All right. So now my, my little inside is done. I have my outside stamped and I have my inside done. <clears throat> Now, because I love you guys, you know I love you, I provided you in your kit not only these pre-scored ones, but I also provided you a wonderful little template. So um, what I like to do is put my template above my card so I can kind of see what I've got and what I'm doing. For me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bend where I have my little mechanisms. I'm going to go ahead and bend them both just because I can. And one thing I want to show you on this template and well, on, on, this, on this one, you can see you have one square you have a large rectangle, and then you have two squares. So your large rectangle has one square on one side, and then it has two squares on the other side. The side that has the one square is going to be the one that always gets tucked into the fold. Okay, the one square, you're going to put glue on, glue on that. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to put glue on the top side of that one little square like that. And I'm going to start on the right-hand side of my card, okay? So for anyone that's challenged uh, right or left, it would be the hand you control your little mouse with. <laughs> So I know, I don't know if I'm reversed from you guys or not. So I'm just going to lay it where I, where I kind of want my box to be. And so for me, I'm just going to lay it not all the way at the bottom. I'm just going to have a little bit of that peeking underneath. And I'm just going to lay it like that. Does everyone see what I've done? And the next thing I'm just going to do is just close that over top to seal it. And I'm going to just kind of give it a little couple love pats to kind of it make sure it adheres. Now, if you're using tear tape, you can do that also. 
Um, so you don't have to use liquid glue. If you use monoadhesive, I find that the monoadhesive falls off after a year. <laughs> Your cards just go kaplooey or with humidity, it becomes bad. So when I open it up, it's like, oh, so I'm going to bend it like that. So it's like, oh, well, that's interesting. So a show of hands or a thumbs up, who is up to this point with me? Okay. All right. So it looks like Sandy, Beth is almost there and Diane. Okay. Sandy's there and Diane is still working on that one. Okay. So um, while we're waiting on Diane to give me the thumbs up um, on this, uh, that's this is uh, where the template is going to come in handy. This first gluing down was was pretty easy. I mean, it's pretty simple to lay something across and then close your card on it. So this other part, it's like what? So that's when if you play with your little template I gave you, it's going to actually. It, this is what it's going to look like on your card. So you're going to do the outside of this piece where it says glue here, that last little square, but I just kind of want you to see the mechanism. So if it helps you to take your mechanism and lay it on your card, you know, just kind of hold it on your card so you can see, all right? So if you see my card, if I hold it there and I go like that, you can see that this mechanism right here, it's, it's not going to be in the crack. So it's like, well, how do, how do I get it? So it's not, okay? Well, what you wanna do is, you know how, um, do you see your, your big rectangle? So one edge of that rectangle is, you know, it's glued up to that edge. So I'm gonna bend it this way. So I only have two of the two, you know, those two squares are facing up. Okay, I'm going to put the glue on that last little one. So I kind of have it folded back on itself. Do you see this? It's just the big rectangle. Oops, sorry. The big rectangle, and I, I fold it at the other end. So everybody look, so I know that you know what you're doing. So here's the rectangle. This is my big rectangle. I'm going to just bend it at the other end of the big rectangle, put my glue here, and I am going to, I can hold this with my hand and then just fold that over. So as I'm folding it over, when I lift it up, it's got it glued. Okay. All right. I see one thumbs up. That's good. So you'll get to try it again on the other side because what we just did, we're going to do on the top part. I like to put, you can put your little pop-ups wherever you want, but I kind of liked one at the top and one at the bottom. Um, I like the way that that looks. So I'm going to take my other one. I am not going to take my template, so make sure that you don't pick up your template because that would be sad. You can turn your template around for the side that you're working on. Remember you have one square on one side of your big rectangle and two on the other side. The one square side is the one that always gets tucked into the fold. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue my one square piece by doing that. I am laying it in, in my corner, up against my fold, and I'm closing the card on that. Have I lost anyone on applying their mechanism? Okay, all right, so Lori, um, is there a question that you want to ask on, on how, um, how are doing that? Do you wanna hold it up? Like, go ahead and unmute. I figured it out. Got it. Oh, wonderful. Mm. Okay, brilliant. Okay, go ahead and um, mute yourself back. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody else have a question? Have I lost anybody? Okay, so Diane, unmute yourself. What question do you have? It's just the way my brain works. <laughs> okay. It doesn't it's, work, you know. I'm, okay. I'm, I visually can see what you're doing, but, but uh, when when you're talking, that's when I have my issues. Um, okay. I'm going to wait. Do you have, okay. I'm going to wait. Um, so you can visually see this. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so I, you know, I, I had laid my piece down, put the glue on it and closed it over. Okay. okay. So once you have that, let me know. For those of you that are ready to move on, you can um, glue your doggy, whichever dogs that you aren't, whichever dogs you, you know, leave one dog for your other card <laughs> or two dogs if you want two dogs in the other card. And then you can begin to glue your dog on your little um, front piece. What I did is I glued one dog flat and then the other dog I put on a dimensional because I wanted him to be more in the foreground. But it's your card, so you get to do what you want. All right, Diane, let me know when you have that one square glued on. Is it clear to the edge of the paper? Yes. Here, Diane, take a look. I'm putting it into the fold, into the fold, and then I just close okay, okay, the window okay. over top of it. All right. Okay. Okay, one's down. All right, so uh -huh. then what you're going to do is put glue on that other little end because, you know, now, you know, because remember where it said glue here, you're going to put glue on that other end square now. So put a little bit of glue on that square, Diane. The, the top of this? Yeah, on, on yeah, so, so bend it over. Do you see how I bent it over? Bend it yeah. over and put glue on the top, that last little panel, put glue on it. Okay, and then what you're gonna do, watch what I do with my finger. I'm going to push it all the way up and then I'm gonna bend it over at the edge of the rectangle and then close my card up. So I'm gonna do that physically. I was waiting to show you. Whoever was needing help with that. So Is I put glue. I put glue on that last. See how I have it coming off of my card? It's glued onto my card panel. Uh, I put glue on the top, right? Glue on the yeah, top. Yeah. Then I'm going to fold. I'm just going to fold it so I only see two squares. I'm going to fold it so these two squares, I'm folding it over at the other end of that big uh -huh. rectangle. And then I'm going to close my card and when i close my card give it a little squeeze i have my square okay all right so one thing that i also wanted to tell you guys um, which some of you have probably already figured this out when you are putting a little image on some of your image sticks above, so you do not want to glue your entire image, nor do you want to put glue on this because some of your image won't cover that. So what I do is I hold it and I go, okay, this much is hanging out. So I'm just going to start from there and go like that. Put my glue like that. And then I set it on so I know that I don't have glue that's going to hang over. Because if I have glue hanging over when I close it, it's going to stick to my card base and 
That's a craft or fail. Ask me how I know that one. <laughs> okay. So there's that. And then I'm going to just do this little happy guy at the top because I like him. And then the same thing. I'm holding, I'm pinching above at where I know I don't want to go beyond where my finger is for the glue. And I'm going to add my glue at that bottom part. And we're good. All right. So, Diane, go ahead and mute yourself again if you can. I am. All right, so Diane, hit your little microphone so it mutes you. Or I can, I'll, I'll try to mute you. Yep, there you go. You did it. Good job. Okay. So who has went, who has, who has went, who has gone ahead and completed their card already? Wave at me if you have. Oh, good. You didn't get too far up ahead. Okay. So now I've got, is there, does everyone have their little dogs on the inside? I see a thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. I know Diane's getting caught up with us, and Beth was having issues with her phone. So let me check on Beth real quickly. Okay, Beth, her computer went into automatic restart. And, oh, that's a sad, that's sadness technology. Sometimes you just hate it. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do with, with my card here, when I put on my dogs, you can see the little um, dachshund I had. That's what I chose. I don't know what you're going to choose. But I had him sticking over the edge a little bit. And then the, the scotchy dog or whatever he's called, uh, the terrier, I had him sticking over the edge a little bit. So when, again, same thing, when I glued this guy down, I kind of held the part that I didn't want to have glue on. That's how I held him. And then I put glue on the back side across and I set him down where I desired to have him. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in front of you. And then I'm going to put dimensionals on my other dog. So I know that his little face is going to, his nose is going to stick out. So I'm going to hold it there because... I don't want to put glue on that or his little paw that's sticking out. So I'm just going to kind of glue from here. Bloop, 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 bloop. And then I am going to place him down. Whoopsie. <laughs> Almost put him in the wrong spot. That would have been another fail. And then I just put him down. So... Yay for no glue on the back side that would stick to anything. And for my little dog, I just like popping him up. So I'm going to get some of my wonderful dimensionals. Oh, I have a half one, a little guy. I'll just put him up there. And I'm just going to put some dimensionals on him. I like using the edges because there aren't using so much real estate for my little stamping things. I'm gonna pull these little guys off. It's always funny when I watch videos online and the ladies are uh, these little things that are just trying to get them off their fingers because they stick. Okay, and then I am just gonna set him a little bit lower because I want the idea of him being in the foreground. So if I have him equal, it's like he's almost sitting on top. So I'm just going to put him, let's see, get his little tail sticking over the edge. Make sure my dimensional is not hanging out, which it is. Shame on me. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got my little doggies. So I'm going to wait for a second before showing you um, what, what I do, I in my tutorial that I've made, um, I share with you a really good secret of how you can know what side you are going to be gluing. But I'll wait for everyone to kind of catch up to me. 
um, before I show you this because I would be afraid that I would lose you on it. Um, or actually, you know what? Wherever you are working, do you want me just to go ahead and show you right now? Okay, I see some thumbs up on that one. All right, I see thumbs up. Okay, so this is my little secret. It's not a very original, exciting secret, but let's just pretend it is, okay? So what I like to do is, um, you know, I have a split panel. So I want, yeah, everyone to be watching because I can only do this one time because after I do it, then it's done. But so what I like, what I like to do is I'm going to line this up and go, okay, that's where it is. But you know what? I'm just going to flip it directly over this way, right? I'm not turning it around that way. I am just turning it around upside down like that. So the same side stays the same side. And I'm just kind of making my little line like that. And then I go, okay, this is the side where I want the glue on. Because I don't really want to glue over top of my card. So now when I'm ready to put it on, I know, oh, yeah, my glue is on that side and I don't glue past this line. So I can get close to the line. I don't even necessarily go up to the line because I like to give a little fudge room. There. So now when I'm ready, I'm going to close my card. And I'm just going to put it where I kind of want it back in the card again, right? Like that and give it a little press. And there I have it. Okay. So that's how I, I do that. And I've got my adorable, cute little card that has my doggies. And then I open them up and... Pop, there they go. So again, this card, you don't have much room uh, <laughs> to write much. So maybe that's a good thing. Depends who you're giving your card to. Just kidding. So um, if you go, well, there's not much room to write. Well, you know, you can just put very vanilla. If you have a dark card base, just put very vanilla on the back and then use the back of the card if you really need a lot more room than what's on the inside. But the inside of the card allows you a little space. You know, you can stamp something in the upper top and then write a little message down here or even finish it off on the back. So I'm going to stop the recording for a minute and then wait for you guys to get caught up and then we'll start uh, the next card. <laughs> 